we've got some time constraints today, we're going to go ahead and get started. So, Kevin, tell your experience. Yeah, I'm going to leave because we've got records management day today, guys. Don't forget, we're shredding in rain. So, come <laughs> on over to Carruthers, we'll take care of it for you. Can I take um, the laptop from the truck? Please. We'll all look the other way. What was that noise? I don't know. Um, a lot of you have seen this, this CAM PowerPoint before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I did want to just talk about FireEye and our future plans for it as we're going forward. Um, and for those of you who have not had the benefit of this before, what the FireEye is, is it's a physical device that combines intrusion detection and intrusion prevention. Those of you who have dealt with network security know that they're usually one kind of device or another. The FireEye puts them both together. It takes a look at what's coming in and helps to prevent what's going out, which these days seems to be more important. Um, it's got proactive, real-time monitoring of security vulnerabilities on user devices. Now, this is a device that scans user devices, meaning desktops and laptops. We're not really concerned about servers here. We're really more concerned about what's happening on the user's uh, personal machines and their workstations. And it's got very much precise reporting of threat incidents with details. I'll, I'll show you the console at the end of this so you get a better idea. But it gives us a very good idea of exactly what's happening, what's coming into our network, and hopefully what we can keep from going out of our network. Uh, it captures network traffic and analyzes it in virtual machines. It also uses the conventional threat signatures that if you've used antivirus software in the past dozen years, we know about. What it does is it captures this network traffic by a network span. So it's not actually in line, it's mirrored to a network port. So the FireEye by itself is not really degrading the network performance at any, any stage. But what it does is it takes the network traffic as it comes in, puts it in a virtual machine inside the FireEye, and then using the headers of the packets only, not the data, it doesn't care about the data, throws the data away, but looks at the header of all of those Ethernet packets, and then matches anything that it sees that might be a threat to an external database. And then it puts up the results on its console, and it also writes it out to the log. Now what we decided to do in IS Pro is take that log, and if we find any threats overnight, every morning it gets reported out to our abuse database. So the folks that are on abuse can deal with the incidents as they happen overnight. Um, it can be used to do both monitoring and reporting, which is what we're using it for, or it can also be used to block compromised machines. So in other words, if it finds a threat, it can turn off that network connection. We're not going to use that, at least initially, because there's a lot of logistical issues involved. We want to make sure there's a human element looking at these threats to be able to say, that might be a false positive, that's not worth worrying about, that type of thing. So we're not going to use it to, that blocking capability right off. Um, does protect us 24-7, it's always on. Um, it allows us to stop problems before we hear about it from other sites. Those of you who had to deal with abuse, uh, from IS Pro before, know that sometimes the University of wherever calls us to say that your machine at this IP address is sending a spam. And then we've got to go remediate it after the fact. And then you guys as LSPs have to spend more time dealing with that. The FireEye hopefully will let us know when a machine is hit before it becomes a threat to everywhere else. Um, easy integration with the present and future tracking and remediation tools that we already have. It's one of the great features of it. Uh, does standard log reporting so that we can get the information out and, and stuff that we can use. Um, there are, there's one position in IS Pro, myself, and two positions in ITS Network uh, Engineering that uh, deal with this. Um, and this was a state budget addendum, so we've got ongoing funding for the FireEye and support and maintenance included. Um, quickly, the first target of our the FireEye was the devices that were hardwired to the more secure network. Uh, those of you who have more secure network ports in your areas, that's where we're going to start. We're doing a phased rollout of scans so that we can get an idea of exactly how large a problem this might be. But as I'll tell you in just a second, that allows for a high level of blah, 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 okay? <laughs> okay, uh, I can't first. type this fast, so the recap is going to be not have all this detail. <laughs> okay. right. You'll have to watch the video. Um, the first scan that we did was the Wired ITS and Carruthers uh, MSN ports with Mickey North and South, um, and we found one or two things of a fairly minor nature there. Then we moved on to development, Uvimco and the School of Nursing, and as of next Monday we're going to do Peabody, Newcomb, um, Mem Jim, oh and let's not forget the lady after Squash, Squash Ports. <laughs> <laughs> 
why there's a more secure network board in the lady after squash courts, I'm not sure, but we're going to scan. Um, then, what we decided to do was as of the 30th of July, we're going to scan all of the more secure network. Um, and the reason for this is we haven't found the whole heck of a lot, all right? There are, at the university, about 3,300 more secure network ports that are configured that way. Only about 1,800 of those are active, all right? So that's a fairly small percentage of our 65,000 more or less active network connections at UVA. So in, uh, to keep me from falling asleep at my desk, we're going to turn it on to the entire more secure network as of a week from Monday, okay? Also, we're going to be Jefferson. Jefferson, of course, the Jefferson Wireless Network, uh, the more secure network. Um, that is wireless. So we're going to do that as of Monday the 30th. Um, and there we go. Uh, we do have a second unit. We do have a second unit in FireEye, which we are just using as a reserve at this point. We're just keeping it in the background so that if something goes wrong with the first unit, we can use it. But there is the capability to perhaps use one unit for scanning one set of the network and another unit to scan another set of the network. We haven't decided that yet. Um, ITS very kindly also uh, got Gigamon network filtering technology. And what this allows us to do is to point it specifically at specific machines, specific VLANs, specific buildings. Um, it's, it's very, very capable and allows us to say, look at this network, but not this network. Look at these machines on this network, but not this network. So that we can really tailor what we, what we want to see. Um, just a little plug, my usual plug here for the MSN. The way the MSN works, of course, is that it has a firewall built in so that anything on a local machine, uh, in other words, an outside infiltrator, evildoer, malefactor, cannot initiate a process on a local machine. Okay? That malefactor, evildoer, whatever, has to be inside the university to start off that process, okay? So that's, what, that's the major function of the MSN. As you, those of you who are on, have people on the MSN know there are other requirements, scanning, uh, identity finder, that kind of thing, that need to be done in order to be on the more secure network. But again, one of the reasons we decided to point the FireEye on the MSN to begin with was because we thought that that's where the most highly sensitive university data would reside. Okay, that's the stuff we're most concerned about. Uh, we get an extra level of insurance. And ideally, the majority of UVA computing devices would either be on the MSN or Jefferson. And ITS and IS Pro are talking about this and, and how we would best make this happen uh, without major interruption or major investment of dollars. But the idea being that you would have you would be on the more secure network by default and you'd have to opt into the less secure network. Talking Discussions about that are ongoing. Um, let's do a quick look at the console. That was <laughs> what risk would have a big risk? It's kind of hard to see in this particular resolution. Um, you can see that in the past two weeks, nothing. The past 24 hours, nothing. <laughs> But if I go to infected host alerts and pull down past three months, now this is the MSN. These are the three things that they found, okay? Um, and these are pretty much the only things that we've found that we haven't remediated because as you can see in the severity here, they really didn't make much of an impact, all right? And it tells us over here what it found. Um, I'll show you in a second that, what that actually means. The, call, the, the important column here is callbacks. None of these machines actually contacted an external server. So none of these machines initiated that contact that we're worried about, where they will do exfiltration of data. So let me go over to the second FireEye, which when we were bringing this up in a prototype mode, we pointed at the dorms. Oh, <laughs> <boy>. <laughs> oh, we wanted to be sure that we found something. You'll be surprised to learn that we found something. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All of these 172 to 26 addresses over here on the <laughs> left are wireless addresses in the dorms. Okay. Now we're not so concerned about the dorms because it's not our data. Okay. These aren't our machines. We don't own them, and we really hope there's no highly sensitive or even moderately sensitive data on these machines. But what you can see here is that a lot of these things were the Trojan flashback, the Mac malware, 
Um, some of them were just regular bot infections and so forth and so on. The one I'd like to point out just briefly here is this one, 172.26.50.186, which you notice made 81 callbacks to servers. Let me expand that a little bit, I'll show you. And this is the kind of information we get from the firearm. Um, miscellaneous um, malicious capabilities observed in the VM. Here's the kind of data that it went through. You can see all these things here that it did. Here's the malicious behavior that it observed in the VM. Again, not on the machine, but in the VM that captured this machine. All sorts of things. Uh, and here are the things that it changed in the operating system. All of this stuff. Um, and all of these command and control servers were contacted by this particular machine. Here's the malware that was detected on the machine. Now, if we wanted to, and I've done this, we can go through and actually download the malware binaries that were loaded on that machine. We can physically take that virus or that piece of malware and look at it if we want to do that too. Um, down here at the bottom, you'll see that there are 29 pages. <laughs> uh, about 25 of those pages were infections from this one machine. Okay. We were trucking along, maybe a couple of two, three infections a day in the dorms. All of a sudden, this kid got infected, and bam, 30, you know, 30 pages of infections overnight. So um, this stuff is great. Um, we're hoping that we will never see an outbreak like this on the administrative side. Um, of course, that's job security for me, so maybe I shouldn't help for that. But uh, this is the kind of thing that, we're, that you can find with the FireEye. And there are lots of other institutions in Virginia that also have FireEyes, use them extensively, um, and they put them in different places. Some of them put them inside their firewall, some of them don't scan wireless. There's a, any number of different ways they can, they can do this with the FireEye. But we think this really is going to give us something that we didn't have before in sort of proactive prevention of these particular type of malicious attacks. Was that fast enough? That was fast. Okay. If you want some excitement, I can bring in my mom's computer. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, yes? So is the remediation going to be basically the same as it's been, you, you know, some the person in LSP right. will get contact and say, hey, yeah. do something. Right, yeah, yeah, if we find something, we'll contact the LSP and say we found this machine. And we'll do our usual network identification, you know, right. we'll run it through the logs to make sure that this IP was actually on that machine and so forth and so forth. Okay. Jack. Um, when you contact us, uh -huh. what kind of information will you be giving us from this? I mean, will we be, will we have access to all of the information that well, you can we'll, see? What we're going to do, um, the way that network engineering is done at IPS, um, they've got an LDAP lookup, a MAC address, an IP address, 